Hello everyone, my name is Anton and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Obsidian app. Now the Obsidian application is a, basically a markdown editor that you can use to create notes and leverage the markdown formatting for your notes. Um, it is pretty powerful in a way that it has backlinks and the backlinks are pretty much a native feature to the actual application. So you can create yourself kind of a linked knowledge database with this particular application. But right now I'm just going to do a walkthrough of the app itself and some of the, I guess, things that you can do with the, the application from a, more of a, a user experience and kind of workspace type situation here. So if we look at the app here on the far left, we have this menu and on this menu we'll show your different plugins right here we have like the quick switcher which allows you to really quickly find a note that you're, you've been working on and open it up from here and you also get some kind of like some short keys that you can hot keys that you can use to do different things um, you also get this map view so as I mentioned, you can create this knowledge linked knowledge database. Um, this particular map view or graph view shows all the relationships between the different notes. You can customize this area and filter out different notes um, or search terms, tags, attachments, etc. And kind of customize this view just to show you the stuff that you want to see because you can see as you start getting more information into this uh, into obsidian and you start having linking things um, all over the place it can get a little I guess um, complicated of a network of information so the the filtering and the customization here of this view is pretty helpful as I mentioned, there would be a few more plugins. These are kind of the typical two that you'll see here. As you enable the other plugins, those will start to pile up here below these two. And then if we go down to the bottom, we have standard three buttons here. One would be to open up a your vault, which is basically a folder that's going to store all of your your files and folders and right here I have three the help obsidian help has its own vault that it uses to store all the help files and I have a couple other vaults that I've created here you can also from this view change the language um, you can change the language in the settings as well if we go down to help you can click on the help here it will open up this particular um, vault and and window that I have open already and if you go into settings you get to see the different sections here and the options and you can set these um, different different things here in the settings I walk through some of this here in a little more detail I won't go into every different setting that you can do here within obsidian this changes um, and there's a lot of stuff that's in here as well so walking through the application here, we went to show the menu. On this left pane, we'll see the basically the file explorer here. This is where you're going to be able to navigate through your files and your folders that you create. As we can see here, that these names here are, are just files that are that are actually stored within your vault or folder. They will all have the .md uh, format or extension behind them because it's their leverages markdown if you're going to use obsidian typically you're gonna or use markdown formatting for your notes as you write them you can create a new note here you can create new folders as well and you can also sort um, this particular file explorer view here one of the other tabs in this pane is the search so you type in a search term you'll get all the results back here and then you can navigate to those and it will typically take you to where the actual 
uh, search term was found in that particular document or file. There are some other options in here to let you kind of customize the, uh, the search that you're doing so you can get a bit more fine grained on what you're looking for. If we go a little bit above the, um, this particular left hand pane, you'll see these two arrows. These arrows let you go back as stated here. When you hover over them, they'll give you an indication of what they do. And you can go forward as well. There are short keys or hot keys um, to do a lot of this navigation as well. So you don't even have to move the mouse to get up here to use these. Uh, you can just do these from the keyboard. In this middle pane, you'll have this is where you'll have your either a single note or many notes open in this particular pane. You can have nothing open um, as well, and you can see how that looks. And from here, then you can create a new file or go to a certain file or even see recent files uh, from this pane if you have nothing open already. So if we click on the start here, we can open up this start file here. And from here, we can put it in preview mode or have it in edit mode. And of course, uh, it is as it stated. In edit mode, you can edit the, the actual document. In preview mode, you cannot edit. You have these little three dots, which gives you a lot more options here of what you can do. You can split these windows um, so that you can open multiple files or you can have one file open but one in preview mode and one in edit mode so as you edit you can see how that will be um, previewed or or formatted um, when you export this particular file as i mentioned you can open up multiple notes in here you, they don't have to just be side by side. This workspace is pretty customizable. You can come in here and you can split the windows up vertically, horizontally. Um, you can have um, as many files as you can fit within the window. Also, the left hand pane here and also the right hand pane all collapse. So you can get more space that you work with here. Um, if we open that back up, right now I'm showing one file open multiple times, but you can also have more than one file open at a time here as well, as shown. Um, these here can all be in edit mode. Some of these are in preview, or you can have some in preview and some in edit as well. You can drag and drop files. You can, um, so like if I want to put this index over here at the bottom instead of on the other side, you can drag these windows around in different places within the canvas. And as I said, you can make this particular uh, application and workspace yours and customize it however you like here um, when you're putting the windows in place. On this right hand side here, we have by default, it'll show the backlinks window. So if you have anything with the with backlinks um, pointing to these files, then it will show you here and it will either say link mentioned, um, mentions or unlinked mentions that will show up here. Now these different panes, um, if you go into the settings, you can enable some of the different uh, core plugins or even third party plugins that will take advantage of those panes and add additional tabs. So I'm going to enable the tags here. I'm going to also enable a, a, a couple more things in here. Let's see the daily notes. And when I enable that daily note, you just see the plugin options appear here. And then you have daily notes. If you have a plugin that you can change the options on, that will show up underneath this plugin option. And then you can come in here and customize the actual plugin um, a little bit further, depending on what the developer um, gives you access to. So if we come back in here, let's see a few more things maybe we can enable. 
let's enable you see we already enabled a few things here the outline random templates daily notes um, I think we let me see start start would be a good one here that we can show so I enabled the tags and then here we can see the different tags we have and I also enabled start so if you want to star any of your notes you come in here you star your note and then it's kind of like more of a, a favorite where you can get to it really quickly you can also I did not show in here where you can pin your your notes into the dashboard here as well um, so this note will stay in this particular dashboard if I say come in here and I try to click on another file it will not change where the default action is typically if I click in the index here and I open click on obsidian you see how it changes if you pin it it will not change to with the new file that you click on it'll open up a different window for that now I also opened daily or um, enable a plugin um, daily notes and as you can see it added an additional icon to the menu and from that menu you can um, get to that particular plugin and I clicked it it created a new daily note and from here I can start typing in things for the day that I want to put in that particular note and similar will happen say here on the publish here it opens up a new window so that if I had access to uh, publish any any of my content uh, I would have that enabled and then um, be able to publish that to the site okay so if we go into the settings here a bit we we'll look at a few more things so in the options they do break them down a bit here so that you can hone in on which settings you want to do for the editor you'll have all the set settings for the stuff that you can do in the editor for files and links for the appearance now in the appearance here this will be another quick um, settings that you can come in and change to customize the application and the, the user experience for yourself I'm in dark mode right now I can easily switch to the light mode for obsidian and if I want to go even further I can click the custom CSS and I can edit the obsidian.css file that's in the vault uh, myself uh, basically you're editing um, C CSS uh, so if you know how to do that then you can go in and customize that particular file and if not if you want to just uh, use something more out of the box uh, you can get the community themes here and you can select one of these and it'll already have the custom settings for that that particular CSS and use it instead Now, outside of the appearance, appearance uh, there are a lot of um, keyboard shortcuts that you can use. They call them hotkeys here. These can also be customized and edited to your liking as well uh, to help speed up and, and make your, I guess, your navigation and use of the application a lot more efficient. We have the about area here you'll get the current version of the app and if there is a new version out you will be prompt here to refresh the app or close and reopen the the application uh, so that you can get the updated version you can get to the help again here you can change your language and if you're an insider you can enable insider bills here as well or activate any commercial license it also tells you which license you have you can see I'm a catalyst insider uh, but you don't have to pay for Obsidian. Uh, one of the beauties is that it is free. Um, it's a pretty powerful tool to, to, to actually have in your toolbox and know that it's free. Um, it also allows you to have all your content local. So that's a, a nice um, additional security piece to, to know that your, your data is yours and you're the only one that has access to it. 
Um, the account options settings here is again if you have an account you can go ahead and log in here um, if you don't have an account again it's free then you don't have to actually log in you have the core plugins I've already went through some of that already you also have third-party plugins so this is something new to 9.11 or 0 0.9.11 and if you turn off safe mode here, you're of course prompt with a security warning here about third party plugins, but I'll go ahead and turn off the safe mode anyway so that I can browse the community plugins. And in here, we get access to additional plugins that the community provides and we can install these. See if I install the calendar and I go back out it shows the installed plugins area here and if I want to enable it I just enable that here and I've already mentioned the plugin options here at the bottom we can see the community themes plugin has an option where we can change the themes really quickly and the calendar here allows a couple of different settings uh, that where I can customize this particular plugin as well Okay, so that was the quick walkthrough of the Obsidian application. Hope you liked the video and the information you found in here to get you familiarized with Obsidian, the application, and kind of what you can do with the, the, particular, the application from a customization standpoint and uh, how you use the app on a basic level. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and if you like the content in the channel please subscribe and until the next time have a nice day